Sustainable agricultural practices are farming methods that when used effectively uh, have great benefits both to our health and that of the environment. And today we have visited a farmer here in Ititu village in Maragua who has integrated some of these principles in his farming activities. We also have an expert on the ground from ICE that is Institute for Culture and Ecology and will be helping us further in understanding some of these principles and how they can be integrated to give us better results in our farming activities. So let's go join our host farmer and the expert. My name is Elijah Kamau Karugia. I work with the Institute for Culture and Ecology. Uh, I'm the program officer in charge of uh, natural resource management and also livelihoods. Dairy farming um, is growing very well here in Moranga, courtesy of the efforts by the county government of Moranga, uh, led by the governor Mwagwairia. Uh, it has uh, established a milk processing factory in Maragua, Moranga Cooperative Creameries, and we also have cooling plants uh, scattered all over. Like here where we are in Itito village, within Kakoigo sublocation, we have a cooling plant. So there is a huge market for dairy farmers. Kamajina ni Joseph Mumeria. Sasa lianziza nini kikundi. So we have gone improving our daily farming. Na diyo tunapata mapato kwa maziwa. Tambo nikuwa napata maziwa kama alita saba hivi okumi. Lakini leo kwa ngombe moja napata kwa siku moja Eh, ile iko chini sana ni 15 liters na inaendelea mpaka 20 Mimi na Shauli kilimo biashara ndio muhimu zaidi ile saving mimi naweka kwa sababu kama ni fees unalipa unaweka kidogo kwa bank eh hivyo hivyo ndio ikakuwa kuna wakati unafika Nasema leo hii 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 hi, hi, kitu naweka nataka kujenga nyumba kama kama hii naona. Mm. Na hii najifunia kama mkulima. Muranga Cooperative Creameries has provided a ready market for dairy farmers in this region and this has greatly impacted their lives like Joseph has shared. What are some of the factors though that a dairy farmer need to incorporate in order for them to get a high milk production? I want to talk about uh, um, the best practices in uh, dairy production. And I also touch on some of the bad practices. Now, uh, production uh, or high production or low production is uh, determined by a number of factors or productivity is determined by a number of factors. So one of them is the selection of the breeding stock. That is the choice of the, the breed of the animal that you want to stock. You need to look at the records for that particular animal. One, to know the the, the, the lineage. Genetics plays an important role in determining the productivity of an animal. It accounts actually for that percent. The, the other thing that the farmers need to take into account is the management. Management accounts for 70 percent. So like here, he has already gotten it right in terms of selecting high producing uh, breeds. That is Asha and Frisian. But then what about management? Management has a number of aspects and uh, one of them is housing. If I look at this uh, livestock shed, I can see it has a provision for the sleeping area, it has a provision for the dunging area, it has a provision for sunlight to come through. At least uh, a portion of this cow shed has a provision for allowing light sunlight to come through because animals like any other living organ seems to require sunlight and that is very important. Then when it, when it comes to feeding, he has a number of feeding troughs and he also has uh, the watering troughs. Very, very important. Now, an animal, just like human beings, requires a balanced diet. And a balanced diet comprises of energy, that is carbohydrates, it requires a, it comprises of uh, proteins, um, 
Th those are the two major components in the livestock feed. That is uh, energy, that is carbohydrates, and uh, proteins. But then, we also need minerals. Animals need minerals. Minerals are very, very important, both uh, for maintaining the health of the animals and also for boosting productivity. One mistake that uh, farmers do, especially here in uh, Maragua, Maragua is a banana growing area, there is a big mistake which I want to talk about, two mistakes farmers uh, do. The bananas are very abundant here and farmers fall into the temptation of chopping these uh, banana stems and giving to the livestock. Now these banana stems or pseudo stems have a lot of fiber. These, these fibers are not important for the digestive system. Sometimes they can broke and if there is obstruction then that animal ha faces the danger of dying. So, and, and again, nutritionally, these stems only have water. They do not have any other nutritional value. The other mistake that farmers do here, this again is a maize growing area. Farmers normally harvest maize and give the maize stock to the, to the livestock. This one has very low value. And I want to say that the uh, grass plants normally increase in nutritional status up to the flowering stage. The harvesting of napier grass should be done at the right time when the napier grass is at least one meter high or tall. Because if you are able to develop the canes, these canes, these canes reduce the nutritional value of the napier grass. So you try as much as possible to harvest when it is around one meter high so that you have a lot of uh, uh, materials for consumption and you reduce these uh, fibrous materials which may not be of great value to the animals. Now in combination uh, with this uh, napier grass, we have the fodder legumes and we have a number of them, like this particular farmer is mixing uh, napier grass with desmodium. Desmodium is a fodder legume, which is very important. Then we also encourage farmers uh, to be able to chop these uh, grasses like this one, chop it into uh, smaller pieces which the animals are able to feed on otherwise if, when you give a whole plant like this the animal will really struggle feeding on this so we encourage farmers who are able to have uh, the machine for chopping this so that it is reduced to smaller pieces which the animals can feed on there are some of some benefits that accrue from uh, dairy farming and uh, one of them is uh, establishment of uh, biogas. Biogas is one form of clean energy. And uh, the good thing is that, apart from the initial cost of installation, uh, there, there are no other running costs. And um, a farmer with as little as a, a herd of two animals can uh, afford to have a uh, biogas and you don't have to have a very big one because uh, it depends on the size of the family and the energy needs for, the, for that particular family. This biogas is very important because the biogas is very important. Even if you have a meat, you cut it. Because the biogas is very important. This product is very important. It's very important. It's very Water is a very important uh, ingredient in farming or in farming business. And uh, rain fed agriculture is no longer reliable. We are encouraging farmers to embark on uh, water harvesting. And water harvesting can be done in two ways. There is a roof catchment, like uh, on the farm, or in this farm where we are, the farmer has uh, done a lot in terms of putting gutters um, to collect the water from the rooftop, and which he intends to put in some underground uh, storage tank and uh, use it for domestic use and also for agriculture. Farmers to harvest the run of water, the water that collects on the ground, you channel it to some uh, depression. We encourage uh, lining that depression with a polythene liner so as to reduce the loss of water through underground seepage. 
So water is very, very important and water harvesting it can go a long way in improving the uh, productivity of the farm. Embracing farming practices that are environmental friendly is critical in cautioning farmers against climate change and improving their adaptive capacity. Susan Mwangi for KT News.